Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Realtree, Hoyt Archery, Muddy Outdoors, Fuse Accessories, Frigid Forage, Trophy Rock, Scott Archery, Cabela's, Rocket Broadheads, Execute Scent Control, Bloodsport Arrows, Redneck Hunting Blinds, Scent Master, Yeti Coolers, Quiet Cat, Non Typical Wildlife Solutions, Deer Grow, Icon Cameras, and Nikon. Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. On today's episode, I'm going to finally start putting my trophy rocks out for the spring. We also have a turkey recipe from Chef Aaron Neal. And if you've ever seen those before, you know that those are a treat and they're well worth writing down all the ingredients in the whole process because it always looks very good. And from what I've heard, uh, it always tastes very good. Finally, we've got to get back into that same plot that we were working on last week. And I've got to spray it real quick. Uh, two reasons. Uh, first, I want to kill some of the green vegetation that's on there before it gets really uh, started growing. And uh, secondly, I want to uh, kind of upgrade the pH. And you do that by either spreading lime, which is a, a normal uh, method of doing it, or like we're going to show you in today's episode, you can use an alternative product called Deer Grow Plot Starter. So we're going to run right through all three of these subjects. I'm going to talk about uh, the mineral location uh, that I'm picking today, the site location, and why I'm choosing that spot. And then uh, we'll kind of roll our way right through the rest of these segments. Maybe just right there on that one. The main thing with the trophy rock is finding a location where there's going to be a lot of deer activity. So you're going to get a lot of usage. I mean, obviously we want the deer to use these things because there's a lot of nutrients in these, uh, in the mineral composition of the trophy rock. It's good for the bucks when they're growing antlers, which they're just starting to do now. And it's really good for the does uh, when they're carrying the fawns heavy and when they get into lactation. So those phases of the uh, life cycle of the deer are really starting to hit about now. So we got to get these things in places where the deer are going to be able to utilize them. So I look for high traffic areas, usually close to a feeding area, uh, like this is a nice food plot that I've seen a lot of deer using. So I know that the trophy rock is going to get plenty of attention. Uh, it doesn't do any good to put it out someplace and then hope that the deer find it. Uh, you've got to put it someplace where you know they're going to find it. Uh, so that was priority number one. Uh, you know, the, the, the health of the deer is super important, but just as important to me as a deer hunter is the ability to put my trail cameras uh, on these trophy rocks during the summer and uh, get consistent photos of some of these bucks that we've been following for several years. It's a lot easier to do it uh, with the trophy rock than it would be with some type of bait. There's so many different animals that will eat corn or whatever else you might put in front of your camera, but the trophy rock uh, basically is only going to attract deer for the most part. So you're not going to get a lot of extra pictures of raccoons and you know crows and squirrels and whatever uh, and you're also going to get a lot more bang for your buck with what you put in front of the camera so there's two things like i said super important the overall health of the deer and getting a lot of trail camera pictures during the summer hello i'm chef aaron neal turkey season's right around the corner here in mid-missouri and me and my friends got the itch to eat a little wild turkey breast today I'm going to do one of my favorite recipes, Southwestern Wild Turkey Rolls. You're going to need egg roll wraps, flour, always season your flour, salt and pepper, panko breadcrumbs, eggs, water, we're going to make an egg wash, I'll show you that here in a minute, ranch dressing with an avocado, we're going to mix this up together and make an avocado ranch dressing dip. You're going to need lime, onion, red pepper, cilantro corn, fire roasted diced tomatoes, uh, spinach, black beans, and that's going to be for your corn and black bean salsa that we're going to put inside these egg rolls. Right now I'm going to trim up my turkey breast and get it looking good. Now that you got your turkey breast cleaned up looking good, you want to make your egg wash. Now egg wash is all it is, is a little bit of water here, I already got in the bowl, and egg. This will help the panko breadcrumbs stick to the turkey. It'll also, at the end, we're going to use it twice. At the end, we're going to put a little bit on our egg rolls. When we roll them, it'll help them seal each other and they won't fall apart while you're frying them. 
So the first thing you do, dip some in your flour. Got this seasoned, of course. Right into your egg wash and in your panko. After you get your turkey breaded, you're gonna go ahead and drop it into the fryer. These babies are gonna turn out perfect. I got a standard Fry Daddy fryer over here with a little bit of canola oil in it. And I got the temperature set on 375 degrees. That ought to be about perfect for frying these wild turkey strips. It's getting golden brown and looking nice already. While those are frying, I'm gonna go in and clean off my cutting board and start chopping my vegetables for this corn salsa. All right, now I got my cook cutting board clean. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my turkey strips out. See how they're golden brown, delicious? What I call GBD, gold brown delicious. Now you're just gonna set these to the side and put the rest of your ingredients together here. I'll start off with this, my onion. Now I'm gonna start slicing and dicing. Make your slits down through here. You want a pretty small, fine dice here. That ought to be enough onion. Move it on to my pepper. Alright, so right now I've got most of my ingredients for the black bean corn salsa. Corn, onion, black beans, spinach, tomatoes, cilantro. I'm going to add a little cheese to it. Heck, I might put a lot of cheese. I like cheese. Put the cheese to it. Season it with salt, pepper, chili powder. Now, depending on how hot you want it, if you like it spicy, put a little more cayenne in there. Look how colorful it is, coming together nicely. And here comes the fun part, putting them together. These are egg roll wraps. You find them in the produce section, believe it or not. It took me a while to find them. <laughs> Get one ready here. You take your piece of turkey and you slice it. Put your corn salsa in there on them. Don't get too much now, you won't be able to get them tight. Now this is real important. You got your egg wash still, you never did throw it out, right? Take it, just dab a little on the edges. This will help it stick together and keep its tight roll. Go like this and pull it back toward you. Hold in the ends. Now you take it from here and just drop it in the fryer until you get that GB and D going brown delicious. While that's cooking, we're going to make our ranch avocado dip. Got my little wand blender here. You can use any kind of blender. Put your avocado, ranch. Golden, brown, and delicious. It's going to be good. Real good. Let's go ahead and cut one of these bad boys open and see what it tastes like. Looking good. Mmm. Get up here, guys, and try some out. You don't like egg rolls? Yeah. <laughs> I believe that's the best egg roll I've ever had. <laughs> Southwestern wild turkey egg roll. Mm, delicious. Until next time, I'm Chef Aaron Neal. Good luck and good hunting. That dang Chef Aaron Neal. It always seems like I watch that segment right before mealtime and I'm starving. But I know one thing too, if you got a turkey down this spring, you can't beat that recipe. I'm back at my food plot now and I uh, talked about a little bit earlier how I need to spray this thing one more time before we let this go and we'll let nature run its course. The product I've got in here is the Plot Start, Plot Starter from uh, Deer Grow is basically a combination of two ingredients. The active ingredient is calcium and that's what brings the pH level up. 
and plants don't like to grow well and especially clover uh, in an environment where the pH is too low, where it's acidic. What we found in the, over the years of planting these little ridge tops like this is that they typically are fairly good on the fertility. The P and K is usually pretty good, but the pH is usually pretty low. And the main reason for that is the leaves that land on top of the ground, they decay and that really makes the soil a lot more acidic. But you do need to keep that in mind. You do need to treat uh, these areas with something to raise the pH. It's a lot easier to use something like this that you can spray on even if it only has a limited time frame of effectiveness uh, than if you try to come in here with ag lime. So we can do that real quick with the plot starter and I do know that it stimulates the plant to grow and to utilize the fertility of the soil more effectively. Um, so that's also built into this product. And it's become a lot more popular. There's a lot of foliar sprays uh, on the market and this is the one that we've been working with, uh, the deer grow, which really stimulates the plants to grow. We're going to hit this right now and then, uh, you know, hopefully uh, I'll have enough to cover the whole, the whole food plot. Well, I got that job done. This should be a really good spot. I'm looking forward to seeing it this fall. One of the questions that I get a lot on the website and from people who email in uh, regards how to break down a piece of property and pick the best stand sites. And they always want to be able to send me an aerial photo or a topo map of their hunting area and see if I'll spend a day or whatever time it takes to analyze that and tell them where to put their tree stands. Of course, I can't do that. You know, I can appreciate the fact that people are putting that much confidence in me, but I don't have time obviously to, to go into that much detail on specific projects, but I can show you how to do it. And next week we're really going to dive into that on how to take aerial photos and topo maps and really take almost like a clean slate view of your hunting area and break it down and find the best stand locations just based on the big picture view. So we're going to cover that next week. In the meantime, I'm going to go back to the office and head down to the house and make a bologna sandwich because I don't have any turkey rolls because Aaron Warbritton and Chef Aaron Neal ate them all. Uh, but We'll bring you some more of those before the season is over too. Well, I appreciate you joining us this week. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big.